Hello. Tonight, I'd like to talk a little bit about the grid in Bitwig Studio. You may have used it before. It's a kind of a modular synthesizer inside the DAW. Uh, allows you to create all sorts of patches, both instruments, effects, uh, pretty much anything you can think of. And specifically, tonight I'd like to talk about how uh, to use the grid to create car plus strong style plucked strings. If you haven't heard of car plus, the car plus strong algorithm, uh, there's a lot of resources out there available. Um, that's K-A-R-P-L-U-S, car plus strong, named after the uh, folks who actually created this algorithm, I think sometime in the 70s, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but essentially what it is, is a way to create plucked string-like sounds. So this type of sound. No samples involved, just a nice string plucky type of sound. Uh, it's very, very simple. It involves using a resonant delay line and a little bit of excitation. So it's kind of an exciter and a resonator, a little bit of a uh, plucked noise burst uh, fed into a delay line that's tuned to a specific resonant pitch, uh, specifically one period of your target fundamental frequency. Um, and you set the feedback in that delay line uh, rather high so that it continues to sort of resonate over time. Um, and you can also dampen with with a low pass filter. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so in the in the grid, uh, this took me a while to figure out actually. It was a fun challenge. Um, part of the part of the problem with working, with this type of uh, synthesis inside the grid is unlike an environment like Max or Pure Data, uh, which has more um, programming style primitives. You can actually do, uh, you know, scripted math. You can do like frequency it is, you know, represented a certain way as a number, and you can convert that around. Um, Bitwig's a little more agnostic. It's kind of almost like everything's CV. Uh, there are number values involved, and there is, you know, absolute and relative uh, scaling, the, you know, the, the numbers do matter, but it's a little less obvious. Uh, so here, this took me a while to figure out. Um, so starting with kind of the, just the delay line and, and a bit of noise pluck. So I've got going on here, let's, let's just kind of walk through this first. I've got uh, pink noise, which I like. It's uh, weighted differently than white noise. It has, um, I forget the, it's not equal energy across bands. I think it's equal energy across octaves or something like that. I forget the exact definition of pink noise, but uh, it, it sounds a little more uh, bassy. And so it creates a nicer, the white noise just sounds a little thin. Or the pink noise sounds a little, a little more full. Um, and then I've got it going through a filter. So if I get rid of this, let's just bypass this exciter stage for now. That's just a little pluck of noise. That's all it is. And it's got a filter on it, so you can kind of change the, the timbre there of the excitation. And that noise pluck is going through, I've got a little bit of gain and velocity scaling here. I'll talk more about that uh, a little later. Is going through a mod delay. And the mod delay device has a built-in feedback loop. Uh, this is the feedback amount. This is the low pass amount um, within the feedback loop. And right now I've got that set to 7.64 milliseconds, which happens to correspond to the uh, period length of uh, waveform at the fundamental of C3. So with no pitch control, and so I disconnected that for a moment, I'm playing different keys on my keyboard, which you can't see. It's playing the same note. It's just always C3. So as I was trying to figure this out, I was like, okay, well, I can take the keyboard pitch in from the keyboard or from the notes coming into the device. And if I hook that up to this mod delay, uh, this is the delay amount. This is me playing up the C major scale or down, down the C major scale starting from C3. So you can hear that's not doing what I want. That's barely changing anything. Um, so that wasn't gonna work. Um, and by the way, the, w the reason I have this inverted is because as we go uh, higher in pitch, um, we, we actually want the uh, delay time to go down uh, because 
the period of, of the waveforms are getting smaller. So as I go down in pitch, I want the period of the waveform to get longer. So the resonant period of that delay line. So that's why this is inverted here. But if I put a constant, try, there we go. So 0 0.5, um, that is an octave up from where we started. Uh, and if I put zero back in here, there. So if I put minus one, there now it's an octave down. So um, started to sort of reverse engineer the scaling here. Okay, if I want this to be an octave higher, I want the delay time to be cut in half. If I want this to be an octave lower, I want the delay time to double. Um, well, that led me to start breaking down how Bitwig treats its pitch data. So uh, pitch data, co coincidentally, um, it actually starts out at, so C3 is actually uh, zero. So this is multiplied by 10, but you can see the value here. This is C3, and then up now I'm playing C4. Uh, you can't hear the difference. Let me hook this back up so we can hear the difference. Oops. Hook this back up. There's C3, there's C4, there's G. So Bitwig um, kind of treats this uh, pitch value, and I've got it multiplied by 10, so, uh, one octave equals 0.1. And then everything in between, you know, a semitone equals whatever. Um, I don't know the exact amount, I guess 0 0.083. Um, so it's kind of like note numbers in that way, um, a little bit, just in a, in a different scale. So um, right now this is, uh, you know, a, in twelfths, in other words, so an octave being twelve steps, uh, twelve of twelve semitones up gives me one, um, and then one semitone up gives me one twelfth. Well, to convert semitones to uh, to frequency in an equal temperament scale, uh, the formula is is here two to the power of n over twelve. So if n is zero, two to the zero power is one. I'm at the same note, so frequency times one. If n is 12, uh, then it's two to the power of one, that's two. So that's 12 semitones up, that's an octave up. Equal temperament um, uses this formula to divide the octave into uh, e even, even steps um, from, the, from that perspective. So using that, uh, what I'm doing here is, um, this is essentially already uh, n over 12. So um, 12 semitones gives me gives me one for the exponent and then the base being two with this constant. So this gives me the scaling multiple if, if I were to multiply by frequency. Well, unfortunately, Bitwig, like I said earlier, doesn't really have a concept of frequency as a number you can pass around. What I need to do is convert this into a value that, that's going to fit nicely into here. So the next step was to um, come in here and uh, invert this because this is a scaling factor for frequency uh, period uh, which corresponds to the, the delay length here in our carpless strong resonator uh, is the inverse of frequency so one divided by the scaling factor gives me a scaling factor suitable for scaling the period or wavelength um, but I, if I feed that directly in so at, at my zero at my sort of no normalized identity value, I've got one here, and I don't want one, I want zero. Um, so if I'm playing C3, in other words, which this is tuned to, I want I want the input here to be zero, so it's not changing anything. That's why this final step is necessary to sub, uh, one, uh, one minus uh, the, the value here. So I'm taking one minus the value that I'm getting uh, for my scalar, uh, for my scaling factor for, for the delay time, and that gives me uh, a factor that's suitable for feeding into this uh, delay mod. This took a while to figure out, a little bit of trial and error and a little bit of uh, problem solving, but it ended up working beautifully, as you can hear. Um, and you can kind of read these values as they're coming in. So as I said earlier, if I want to go up an octave, then I want to feed in um, a value of, of 0.5 here, which is, because this is inverted, uh, minus 100%, that's actually kind of like minus one half 
Um, in other words, it's cutting the delay time in half, which is exactly what I want to go up an octave. I'm cutting the delay time, the period, the wavelength in half. If I go down an octave, then I want to double the delay time. Um, so mine, you know, this is again inverted, so this is really like a plus one, which is doubling the delay time uh, as per the way this this input scales scales things. So there we have it for our um, math to get us the right pitch that we need. So moving on, um, the I talked a little bit about the resonator section earlier. The way that uh, this is set up, again, I've got noise coming into a, a SVF here, uh, just a bandpass filter. And then I've got this pluck uh, envelope modulating that, um, a very short little pluck of noise. Here, I've got a velocity multiplier, which is a great little device in the grid. And this is just to give things, uh, you know, if I play softly, Aggressively, it just gives scaling to the uh, to the excitation that's going into the delay line. Which gives you the ability to play with dynamics. It's very nice. Um, so yeah, so the, the exciter is very simple and you can use all sorts of things. You can put kind of whatever you want in here. In fact, I've got another uh, patch where I'm, I'm creating a crazy feedback loop because this resonant tune delay is just such an interesting physical modeling concept to work with. It kind of approximates um, the, the vibration of a string in a really crude way um, in the way a string decays. So you can kind of abuse it and do all sorts of things. But what I'm getting at is you can feed whatever you want in here and it'll, it'll play interesting pitched sounds. Uh, this is kind of the traditional way to do it with, uh, with, with noise. You can also use the envelope itself. So here, the filter doesn't matter. What I'm doing is taking the envelope out uh, directly into the delay. And if I get too long, it doesn't work because it, it actually outlives the, the, the delay time. But I want this to complete within the, del the current delay time. If I increase the attack, you can hear that sort of modulating. Um, that's roughly similar to playing at a different position on the string when you're doing it this way. Um, but the noise just gives a little more flexibility. And the other nice thing about it, I've got this actually mapped to a macro. This lovely stereo. Oh, so lush. Wonderful. So that's just widening the noise here with the stereo that's going into the exciter. And that gives us a uh, beautiful, beautiful tone. Um... Cool. So that's kind of the exciter section, and I, I you know, my preset here, I have this parameterized, so you can have a high degree of control. You can, by the way, you can make this really long, and that's why I added this gain because when it get, when the exciter gets, um, you know, when this uh, envelope in the exciter gets really long, it gets kind of loud, but it also creates this beautiful. It's almost like reverb. Very nice. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, the frequency and the resonance of that filter just gives a different tone. Um, so moving on to the resonator section, really that's this is, is what I'm talking about when I say resonator. This is just some, um, some performance parameterization that just makes this sound a little more realistic. So what's going on here um let's not think about these keyboards uh, inputs for now um but looking at the rest of this i've got two controls here decay and damping and these correspond directly to the feedback and the damping the the low pass within our mod delay feedback loop respectively so decay the higher the decay is um which you can see here I think right now it's actually at, I'm gonna turn these both all the way up. I think right now it's actually at near unity. Oh, there you go, there's unity. It just decays forever. Which in itself is kind of nice. You can, you know, you can play with that <laughs> if you want. Um, but uh, the decay here, if I turn this all the way down, 
It doesn't matter how long... I mean, my exciter still does something, but this is the decay of the, uh, the, the feedback of, of the resonant delay. Um, so it's not regenerating. It's, it's just stopping very quickly. And if I turn this even farther down, it doesn't even sound pitched anymore. So I kind of just parameterized this in a way that I thought sounded nice. As you turn this up, you can hear the notes getting longer. So you could modulate this or, you know, map it to a control if you wanted to kind of like simulate muting. Um, and then the velocity multiplier here, this is just a, a way, and this is optional, to again add a little uh, dynamic performance here. The harder I play the key, the longer it will decay. So it... Yeah, you've just got a little more performance control there. Uh, I think it's easy to overdo here because it's kind of touchy. So I usually keep this kind of low, or have been anyway. Um, cool, and then the damping. So I keep my decay high, it's still regenerating. It's just because I've got a low pass filter here in the feedback loop, it's just damping the high frequencies. Almost sounds kind of like a palm mute or something like that if you're a guitar player. Just another another uh, modifier for, for the timbre here. Um, and similarly, the, with this velocity multiplier, you know, I can set this so if I'm playing softly, the damping is, is very high. And then if I'm playing loudly, the damping is less, so. Just much more dynamic that way. But you'll notice uh, right now, the way I have this set, um, the lower notes ring a lot longer than the high notes, even though they have the same level of damping. Uh, that's because, you know, as the delay gets longer, the feedback as a, you know, even at the same level of regeneration will cause it to ring out more. So that's what these, uh, are attempting to adjust for. I completely, uh, just eyeballed these, but if I hook this up, then my high notes still ring out. And again, if I take this off, then my high notes don't ring out as long as the low notes. But if I hook this up, it's a little more normalized across the scale. And that's what I was going for. Same with this, uh, with the damping. In this case, if I'm at a low damping, the low notes don't sound as damped as the high notes. That's why this bend is going the other way. Maybe that's a little overdone, maybe, but just an attempt to keep that damping sounding similar across the scale. So that about wraps it up. Uh, this is a patch I, I really like. Um, I love Car Plus Strong Synthesis. I think it's, it's wonderful. It's just such a fun experimental technique uh, for physical modeling type stuff. You can use it for pluck string sounds, and like I was saying earlier, you can use it for all sorts of crazy other stuff play around with putting different sounds as the exciter and you'll get some really cool results. Um, anyway, uh, I'm just rambling at this point. So thanks for watching. Hope this uh, was enjoyable, got something out of it and uh, yeah, have a, have a great day wherever you are in the world. <laughs>